normally react out of anger or perhaps bitterness or frustration. But kindness actually leads us spiritually to do the opposite. To respond in love and forgiveness. And for us to express kindness to those sort of people requires the work of the Holy Spirit. And that is why kindness is the fruit of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit supernaturally orientating our hearts towards those people that we don't think deserve it. Sometimes God has to pull us into a position to be kind to them. Those that perhaps won't even love us in return, God wants to tug our hearts and reorientate ourselves towards them. And I know we're asking God why. Why God? Why? why? Normally it's why me. And, and it goes to, English goes together, it's like a big wine. Why me? <laughs> why me? And that is actually our flesh responding. But the Holy Spirit is doing the tugging. Have you ever been there? And you're going, I cannot, I do not want to. No, 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 no. And you give God a list. This is why not. And that is where the fruit of kindness comes out in our lives only through the courage and also the strength that God can give you. And I love this verse, Colossians 3.12, where it refers to clothing yourself. Therefore, clothe yourself as God's chosen people. That's you and I, holy and dear loved. That is us. Isn't that amazing? But that's not where it leaves us. It says, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I don't want just this niceness to come out of me. I want kindness to ooze out of me. I want the Holy Spirit to reorientate our hearts towards those that are suffering and lost. Wherever we might find ourselves. When I was thinking about this image that we've got up on the screen, I was thinking, who taught you how to dress yourself? Do you remember that? Putting the shoes on the wrong feet. Tying out your laces wrong. What about having your pants on back to front? Or indeed, I had to check it this morning, my jumper. Is the tag on the inside or the outside? Who taught you to clothe yourself? It was your parents, wasn't it? And that's what God wants to teach us here today. To how to clothe ourselves in kindness. How do we clothe ourselves in kindness? We need to look to Jesus, the real Jesus, standing up for us and showing us what it means to be kind and not just nice. The watered-down version. Jesus presents a compelling portrayal of kindness. Jesus was kind despite of who he faced. Despite who we face, we are called to be kind. Who are you normally kind to? Probably got a list in your head. Other people that we want to be kind to more? Perhaps even do we reserve our kindness for those people only because we think they deserve it? Like a table at a restaurant with reserved signs on them for paying customers only. Do we invite people into our lives that we would not normally be kind to? Not reserving our kindness for friends and family, perhaps those work colleagues that have done us favours in the past, perhaps your church family, because everybody loves home. those that have real meaning in our lives, it's easier to be kind towards them, isn't it? But that's not what Jesus modelled to us. He wasn't only kind to the twelve or just his followers. He showed kindness to many more. The danger is, if we put up reserved signs at each one of our kind tables, 
it doesn't leave room for others to join in. Jesus presents a very different and compelling portrait of kindness, making room for others. Jesus showed kindness when he touched the untouchable. In Matthew 8, 1 to 4, it says that a leper comes down the mountainside, emerging from the shadows. He kneels before Jesus and he asks to be made clean. Jesus touches him. And just like that, he's clean. Jesus showed kindness when he and, and compassion for those that were suffering, freeing the demon-possessed men, restoring sight to the blind, healing the lame, deaf, mute. And that's just to name a few. Jesus showed kindness when he was moved by those that were in need in Matthew 14. After landing on the shore, he saw the large, large crowd gathered like sheep without shepherd, he remarks. And he begins to teach them many things all the way through to the late afternoon around dinner time. And not wanting to send them away, he does a miracle by feeding 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. Jesus showed kindness when he spent time with the rejected and alienated in his society. And the Samaritan woman that we find in John chapter 4, if you want to join with me, that's where we're going to be spending our time. John chapter 4. She was rejected by her own people. And this is possibly one of those stories that you're quite familiar with. But when we view the real Jesus standing up for kindness, we see that this woman being alienated had decided to come out in the hottest part of the day instead of the normal morning or evening. She comes to the well to draw water for her household. It's way too hot to be doing that, just like here in Australia. <coughs> now, Jesus and his disciples were traveling to Jerusalem. Oh, sorry, from Jerusalem to the south of Galilee. And they're making their journey. And of course, they look at the quickest route, like everybody does. When you're going to your GPS, you look for the quickest way, don't you? And that led them through Samaria. Tired and thirsty, Jesus actually sits down by Jacob's well. And while his disciples decide to go off for KFC in the local village... Jesus stays. Why? KFC gets me hungry every time. What's he doing? Well, there's a Samaritan woman that then comes off the horizon and he sees them. And he meets, Jesus meets with this woman. And this kindness is shown just in Jesus showing an interest in this woman. He broke rules, customs, traditions. His people would not normally associate with the Samaritans, let alone a woman. I know that doesn't sound nice. But he's showing his kindness. He's even asking for a drink from her jar, we presume, or cup. And she's going, hang on, that doesn't make sense. She's shocked by his request because that would make him ceremonially unclean. He then has this wonderful conversation, making time for her. He talks in verse 13 about a living water where she would never thirst again. And in verse 14, he talks about a gift that would satisfy her soul. At first, the Samaritan woman isn't completely fully understanding Jesus, so there's a bit of banter back and forth. Jesus starts discussing, and she starts discussing viewpoints on worship, her belief about the Messiah coming, and then he reveals himself to her as the Messiah. I am he. And just as the woman is beginning to grasp, will the real Jesus please stand up? Will the real Messiah please stand up? He does. Here I am. 
the disciples return. And like Jesus, our kindness can be as simple as showing interest in someone who is alienated or even rejected by others. You know those people in the workplace that don't seem to get along with anybody and you might not even like them yourself? Those people that are alienated, we are called to be kind towards. Jesus makes time to have a conversation, sitting down, having meaningful, not how's the weather type of conversation, but meaningful conversation. When you start a meaningful conversation with somebody, it is amazing how the Holy Spirit starts bringing about those sorts of things that align themselves up to what you believe. Jesus, the Bible. It's often, what do you do on Sundays? Or what do you do for a living? Or what, what do you do? On your weekends, somebody will ask you something and that's your opportunity to have a meaningful conversation with that person. May God challenge each and every single one of us to look past perhaps those people that we've been growing accustomed to be kind towards. Clothing ourselves now being shown how to clothe ourselves by God, we might now have the courage and strength to reach out to those people on the fringe. Looking for people that seem out of place or uncomfortable in a room. Have you ever felt that way? And standing in a corner, you might be able to walk across the room and reach out to them. May the Holy Spirit challenge us. Not just on Sunday, but every single day, wherever we might find ourselves, to open our eyes to these type of people, being clothed by his kindness, to walk then into a conversation with someone that is very different from ourselves. Like this woman was very different, God brings us, like Jesus, at the right time, at the right place, with words of life and hope and pointing them to God. Jesus was kind just by showing an interest in this woman. Jesus presents a very different and compelling portrait of kindness. He showed us kindness is in spite of opposition. In spite of the other person or their behaviour, maybe we think they don't even deserve our kindness. Maybe they need to change before we are kind to them. Maybe they need to do something and we can repay them with our kindness. Make sure they appreciate it before I hand it over. Abrasive people lurk in every area of our lives. We can't get away from them. They enroll in our classes. They attend the same events. They perhaps are in our workplaces and even, horrifically, they might even reside within our homes. Rude people, selfish people, hurtful people are mixed in with the pleasant ones and they are unavoidable. Unavoidable. We cannot associate only with those people whom we enjoy. We need to take our kindness and we need to share it with everyone. I know everything within you wants to take your kindness and just take it home with you and leave them behind you. But God is compelling our hearts to be orientated towards people even in spite of their opposition towards us. Kindness in spite of how they're treating you and what others might think of you. Because people can be judgmental, can't they? They judge us. They call you a Christian. Like, that's a bad thing. Is it really a bad thing? I remember when Jesus freak was a bad thing. Everybody used to call us in youth Jesus freaks. And then all of a sudden a book came out and made it really cool to say, yes, I'm a Jesus freak. I think we need to take uh, a stand and stand up for the real Jesus. Maybe that you might have been called a hypocrite. Maybe 
you might have been called deluded, maybe even haters or worse. It takes a lot of kindness to reach out to people who hurt us. And, and kindness may not be a pleasant thing. In fact, sometimes it's like somebody has just kneed you in the chest. 